All right, this will be kind of <laughs> listing presentation esque uh, role play. Uh, what I want to do is specifically go over some scenarios with with Tanner in regards to what we can do to improve his listing presentation. So this is the way we'll start it. Tanner will pretend this is whatever, you know what I mean? This will be the CMA. What specifically do you want to work on? Is it the pricing part? Is it um, asking for the signature? Uh, what do you specifically want to work on today that we can kind of uh, record and, and do in the group? Pricing. Pricing, okay, cool, perfect. Let's fast forward into the pricing session. Great, Tanner. So everything I've said so far makes sense. We're on the same page. Everything looks good. Uh, we're hoping for a little, little more. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I wanted to say that before we dive into the mm -hmm. pricing, just to make sure there's no loose ends, nothing that you need clarification on. Are we good with why I'm here, the purpose of our meeting, as we transition into the pricing of your home? Yes. Okay, cool. Perfect. So um, I brought. A couple comparables here. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to show you the difference here, right? We have some actives. We do have the solds, which is the primary focus that we'll do today. And lastly, the expireds, right? Are you familiar with these three categories? Have you seen them before? Yes. Cool. So the expires, obviously, I put your home here too. You definitely don't want to end up there again, right? No. Yeah. Um, expireds, I like putting on and discussing slightly for a little bit because they give us an indication of people who tried out a particular price or methodology and we know for a fact it didn't work. And that's the reality, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Actives, these are obviously gonna be your competition, right? Are you familiar with any of these homes? Have you seen any of them? Or are you friends with any of the owners? Yeah, we've seen this one. We've seen the sign in the front yard. Okay, but you haven't mm -hmm. gone personally to tour it or anything, right? No. Cool. Now, uh, the actives, We'll, we'll take a look at here, but really what I want to focus on is the solds because when an appraiser comes and when buyers come, this is the number one thing they're looking at. Would you agree? Yes, for sure. Yeah, because actives, again, we can put it up for whatever we want, but solds is what they actually sold for, okay? Now, I really want to zero in on this one. Are you familiar with this home, 123 Elm Street right here? Yes. It's literally right around the corner for yep. me, right? So if you go around the corner here, three mm -hmm. houses down, Okay. I went to go take a look at it before um, it closed, about mm -hmm. a week before, and I took a look at the upgrades and everything that they did to it. Have you guys gone and taken a look at it or no? No. Okay, fantastic. Now, I believe this to be the most comparable to your home today. How many bedrooms does it have? Three. Baths? Two. And the square footage? 100. 1,500. 1,500, right? And you're at like 1,532 here, right? Right. So super similar. And what did they sell for? Looks like it's four hundred and sixty thousand. Yep, four sixty. And how many days did it take for them to sell? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Okay. So when you look at fifty-two days to sell, right? That's not the total process. That's how long it took them to basically get it under contract. Right? Okay. So you probably have to add another thirty days to that in regards to you know the lending process and escrow and all that stuff, right? So it took about three months. How mm -hmm. does that work? About three months for a time frame in regards to you guys getting over to North Carolina? We can make that happen. Okay, like would you like for it to be sooner? Oh yeah, sooner. To, sooner, yeah. so ideally sooner, right? Yeah. Now, what'd you think about the price? It's an all right price. Okay. Of course we want as much as, much as we could get. Of course, mm -hmm. we, we, we always want more and we want the most, right? <laughs> now. Based on everything you've seen here, this most comparable home mm -hmm. and what the market is saying, what price do you think is the right price to go on the market for this home today? Mm -hmm. Say 460. 460? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, as we pause the role play, y'all, he's being very cooperative, right? He's, he's yeah. going by the logic, right? So just for the yeah. sake of the video, let's... Let, let, let's be a little bit tougher. Maybe go a little bit higher and, and be a little bit more demanding, okay. right? Because I know I, I presented it well and, and you're being a logical yeah. seller, but let's say for whatever reason you want a little bit more or maybe say, well, 460, but we want to try higher. That way we can kind of go back and forth. Okay, so go ahead. So based on what we're looking at here, we'll re resume yeah. the role play. Great here. agent here. <laughs> Trust this guy. Based on what we're looking at here, Tanner, right? That home, the comparables, what price do you think is the right price to put this home on the market for today? Let's do 480. 480. Yeah. Okay. So we saw that this one sold for 460. You right. guys want to go up for 480. Yes. A $20,000 difference. 
Yeah. Okay, talk to me about that. What's mm -hmm. in your mind why tack on an extra 20,000? Yeah, well, we can start higher and we can reduce the price if it doesn't sell, you know? That way, if someone's interested in it, we can get it for 480 instead of 460. And okay. then we can negotiate down. Cool. Oh, okay. So your thought process is we need wiggle room to negotiate. Right. Right. Okay, cool. Now, if you notice uh, these other two homes here, now this one that sold for 460, which is the most comparable, uh -huh. right? They did multiple price reductions. Oh. Right. So if you take a look here at the history, they started at 480. Mm. Right. And then notice 45 days in, they lowered it to 460. You see that? Okay. Right, okay. Yeah, because I, I, I put notes here. They put it on uh -huh. the market for 480, reduced it to 460, and then within a week, at 460, they locked it in at 460, meaning mm -hmm. what they lowered it to, they locked it in for, right? Mm -hmm. These other two here, notice this one. This one's a little bit smaller than yours, not totally comparable, but look, they put it on the market within seven days, they sold it, and it sold above asking price. They put it up for 420, it sold for 425. Hmm. So what do you notice there in those correlations with taking longer to sell versus homes that sell quicker? Well, it looks like the home that took longer to sell needed price reductions and the home that was initially priced lower got above asking. Yeah. And sold so quicker. So are you seeing that correlation there? The, the reason I bring that up is your thought process is we need the cushion to negotiate down, right? Right. But based on what we're seeing here, is that the mm -hmm. case? It's not the case, no. But. Yeah, and ideally you guys wanna get the most amount of money for the home, correct? Right. Yeah, so based on what we see here and the reality of the market, can you see why 460 would be the right price? Okay, so if we list it at 460, it's a possible chance we can get more than 460. Exactly, potentially, right? Because when you come out of the gate strong at the right price, we get the most buyer interest. Mm -hmm. And if we potentially get more showings and more people interested in the home, that could lead to, what do you think, more offers? Right. And if we get more offers, then I can do my job and negotiate on your behalf to potentially get you more. How does that sound versus trying to negotiate down? Okay. It does, now that you mention it, it seems more appealing. Right. See? And am I being combative with you? We'll pause the role player. Am I being combative with you? Am I being, now, again, you're being reasonable and you're not being too hard, but I think once you get more experience, you'll kind of, understand where sellers are coming from and some of the stuff that they say but I'm taking control I'm asking you questions I'm making the the easy points right and that's why when you when you do these things like you put the actives and the solds and the expireds you want to be strategic right I'm only gonna put maybe two actives two or three solds and like one or two expireds but I'll put a sold that sold above asking even if it's not in their price range so they can see the point mm -hmm. just like I'll also put a sold that did price reductions or took a long time to sell. Why? Because then I can make that point, right? right. It, it doesn't matter if the home is the same or not, the market's the market and the dynamics of the market remain the same for the most part, unless we're talking extremes, mm -hmm. like a $100 million home or a $10,000 little mobile home. But for the vast majority of the market, these things apply. And this is why it's even more important too that you're familiar with the inventory, the trends, right? Because you can say, hey, you know, this home took 52 days to sell with price reductions. The average days on market in your area is 21. Meaning if after 21 days we don't sell this home, the potential of you getting what you're asking starts to plummet. Mm -hmm. Because there's a correlation there. The more days on market, the less it's worth, right? Right. But you would have to know that statistic to be able to say that with confidence, mm -hmm. right? Same thing when I look and I see that there's price reductions, you would have to do that research prior to the meeting, right? Right. Cool. Any other part in here that you think is uh, kind of difficult for you or a particular objection they would give you that you would feel? Yeah. Yeah, today I spoke with a gentleman and he said, uh, you know, the property was at 2.2. Okay. And he was in charge of his agent. Oh, he was so running the show. He runs the show. Yeah, yeah it's his business. Cool. So, okay. um, you know, I was trying to get him to understand mm -hmm. this strategy here. Yeah, you don't want to do that over the phone, though. You want no. to do that in person. Yeah. Because, um, like, let's say we were having that conversation. So did he basically say, well, I was in charge and I didn't like that? Or what did he say? Yeah, he was in charge. And if he considers relisting it in the future, yeah. he's going to go with her. And he's going to up the price okay. because, you know, the market's going to go up. Okay. You know, equity 
Of course. You know, well, long term, yeah. Infl I mean, yeah. if you wait five, ten years, of course the market's going to go up. Right. But do you want to wait that long to sell it, or would you rather sell it now? A lot of we're role right, playing. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to sell it. Would you like to though? Yes. You see what I did there? Yes. That's the default. We don't have to sell, of course, and that's great. But would you like to though? Yeah. You see, that's a great follow-up question. Mm -hmm. So great. So now it sounds to me like you were in, you said you were in charge of this situation to kind of run in the show. Is that ideal for you? Do you want to be in charge or do you want your realtor to take charge and get this thing sold? Mm -hmm. Well, they take care of all the paperwork and stuff, but I set the price. Well, who sets the price, uh, Tanner? Mm -hmm. Let's say we're talking, right? Yeah. Is it the market or is it us or you? Yeah. Well, the market and there's comparables in my area that are listed at 2.4 and they're active. There's three and there's two that have sold for more than what I'm asking for. Okay. Well, the actives we can't look at because that's active, but mm -hmm. we can look at the solds. Mm -hmm. So if you put it on the market based on the sold prices and you didn't sell, what do you think happened? Hmm. Well, just on my area, based on my area, it takes a long time for the properties to sell. Okay. Mm -hmm. You think it had anything to do with your price? <laughs> Maybe, but they sold okay. at a higher price. Okay, well that's them. You didn't. Do mm -hmm. you think any adjustments need to be made or you think your home was perfect, the strategy was perfect, and it's just the market? It's just the market, and if I do decide to make a change, I'm going to list it higher. Okay. So you went off the market for 2.2 and you didn't sell. Did you get any offers? We did, yeah. Not what we were asking for though. Okay, so you got lower offers at 2.2 and the, you're thinking raise the price for it to sell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Who recommended that? I did. Okay, well, the are, market. You, are, are you seeing a trend here, Tanner? Mm -hmm. You want to run the show. Are you getting the result that you want though? <laughs> no. It's, well, it's my decision, but you know, it's, that's course. okay. It's okay. Of course, you know, yeah. But are you willing to let the realtor, whether it's that person, me or anybody else, get in the driver's seat to help you here? Or are you going to want to be in control the whole way? I want to be in control. Is that going to get you the result though? Uh, maybe. We already have one instance where it didn't. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to consider making an adjustment or are you just going to keep doing it? Or is it your way or the highway? Yeah. Well, I mean, if I decided to relist it, I would go with my agent again. Okay. Would you have a conversation with somebody else to offer a different solution? Uh... Okay, look, I'll say this, Tanner. It sounds like you would at least be open to it, right? Which is cool, right? If you have a relationship, that's fine. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. All I'm offering is a conversation for us to kind of see what happened, any recommendations I can make and see if it would work. And if it doesn't, cool. You can still go with the other agent. Would you be open to meeting this week or maybe this weekend for 10 or 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. When are you available? Pause, that's what I would do, mm -hmm. right? But you are stubborn. Like I'm already, based on that conversation, I'm already like, I wouldn't want to work with him, right? I know we're kind of going off on the, the role play because it was supposed to be at the presentation, but you don't want to explain the listing presentation stuff on the phone. You want to save that for the meeting because if they start asking questions, say, great. It sounds like you're, you, you would be open to meeting and hearing more about this. Let's get together. Because then if you explain on the phone, why are we even going to meet? And you're just, you're um, what's called uh, front loading is what they call it in selling. You're giving too much. It's like, oh yeah, you know, if I work with you, Tanner, like let's say we're on the phone, initial phone call. Yeah, I would list your home for 500, charge you 6%. You probably walk away with like, you know, 470 grand. They're not going to meet with you. Oh, okay, cool, bye. You didn't set an appointment. You didn't leave anything for the meeting. You just front loaded and they're not gonna, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why you wanna make sure that you, you save your ammunition because everything has to be done in a sequence. We have to give them the information that's relevant to, to their decision when it's time to make the decision, not beforehand. If they're not in a position to make a decision, they're just gonna go based on their emotions and what are they gonna do? If there's no commitment to hearing that information from you on the phone, what do you think they're gonna do? They'll call me or the next guy, hey, Tanner said 506%, what will you do? And now you become a commodity and they just shop you around. Then you have no chance, right? Mm -hmm. But understand, the proof is in the pudding. They wanna run the show, they didn't get the result. That's why you're kinda of chuckling when I was asking you those questions, because it's obvious, dude. You're not getting the result. You gotta change your strategy, right? Cool, perfect.